My name is Trey Hutt and I'll be with you again today. Today we're going to talk to you about emergency expenses and we're going to talk to you um, about how to avoid scam. Um, first of all, with emergency expenses, I want you to be aware that emergency expenses such as tarping a roof, um, those absolutely are going to be included in your claim um, and they are very easy expenses to get an adjuster to, um, to pay. So if you are going to have someone come tarp your roof, remove trees, even moving stuff uh, to a storage unit somewhere, maybe to protect it from further damage, those kind of expenses are, um, are certainly going to be covered. Um, I would say a couple of things. First of all, safety first. While some of you uh, out there may be capable of tarping a roof, um, I have to say that I don't think it's the best use of your skill set. Um, it's, you know, climbing around in poor conditions on a slippery roof is probably not the best use of your time and skills. And I would encourage you to hire somebody because, again, the insurance company is going to pay for it. Um, and I would much rather see you treating patients than being a patient. I think we'd all agree that's the best way to go. Um, uh, I want to be a little bit more clear, though, on, on tree removal because there is some confusion sometimes. For the removal of a tree to be covered by your insurance policy, it has to fall on a covered structure. So in other words, the tree will need to have fallen either on the roof of the building, on maybe an outbuilding, say a storage building or shed, or in the case of a home, your detached garage, it could fall on a fence um, as a covered structure. But if it simply falls in a yard or a parking lot, um, that's something that's generally not going to be covered by your insurance company. Now, having said that, if you have several trees down, some are on building and some are not, um, if you get one receipt from a tree removal service, it's going to be very difficult for an insurance company to determine what was and was not on the building and how those charges work. So frankly, um, it's possible you may get those paid for anyway. But if you just have trees down in your parking lot or in your yard, um, that's something you're going to bear responsibility for. Um, beyond that, um, again, moving and uh, particularly when there's floodwaters, um, you may have to take a lot of equipment, records, things like that, and move them uh, to safety somewhere else. I want you to be aware of two things. Number one, the cost of that moving is an expense that should be covered by your insurance company. And second of all, your insurance follows that equipment um, and contents where they go. Um, your policy automatically adjusts to the new location, even though you haven't informed the insurance company of that new location. So be aware you have automatic coverage uh, for a temporary storage location after a storm. Um, moving beyond emergency expenses, I want to talk to you about scams because unfortunately the first people that we saw and probably that you're seeing now are people that are predators and they're looking to take advantage of the situation. Um, Jimmy Petronas, the CFO of the state, has called them locusts and I think that's a pretty apt description. And by that we're talking about predatory contractors and public adjusters and people that are anxious to get a signature on a form so that they can get their hands on your insurance money. So you have to be careful. What I would say is, in general, try to avoid the big national roofing companies. Um, and bear in mind that companies with the best marketing and the best salesmanship are often the ones that do the poorest work. I want to hire a roofer that does great roofing work. I don't necessarily want to hire a roofer that has the slickest marketing materials. So bear that in mind. If they have yard signs, if they have door hangers, Marketing materials like that are usually an indicator of an outfit that's just there for your insurance money and a lot less interested maybe in helping you in the long term. Um, if you can, um, the ideal way to handle this is if you had someone do roofing work for you before, hire them again. Um, obviously, if you can stay with someone that's local, that's the ideal situation because they'll be there long after the hurricane. And if you have problems with the roof, then you can get your hands right, right on them. Um, if somebody goes back to Texas or Louisiana after putting on a roof and it turns out they did a poor job, you're going to have a really rough time uh, getting to those guys. And Florida regulators are not going to be able to reach those folks either. So a Florida licensed contractor is your best option and a local obviously is your best choice. One red flag in particular, if they ask to see your insurance policy, you need to send them on their way. Your insurance coverage is none of their business. Now, later on, we'll talk about how adjusters and contractors may coordinate and talk with one another, but you need to uh, have them work as if they're assuming you're going to write them a check out of pocket and you have no insurance policy. If they insist on seeing insurance, send them on their way. They're, uh, they're not there for your benefit. They're there for their benefit. Um, one final thing I'll say before I close, 
is do not be afraid to ask for an advance for your insurance company. If you show them, if you can email your adjuster a picture um, that shows significant damage to your building and to your practice, you should have absolutely no difficulty asking them for a check right now. And that applies to both the flood and uh, the wind insurer. Your wind insurer is going to be a little bit more cooperative with that because they don't have to deal with some of the strictures of a federal flood policy. But ask for advances on both of your policies if you have more than one policy involved. And don't be afraid to do it. Um, you're going to need some money. Um, and it will also help establish a flow with them. So ask for money now. If you can't get an advance, please get in contact with the FMA and let them reach out to me and we'll see what we can do to help um, sort of improve the situation. Um, I'm going to close there, but I would encourage you to uh, look at other videos in our series. And don't forget to join us on October 10th, where we're going to have a live webinar with uh, FMA staff and me, and I'll be able to answer specific technical questions and insurance coverage questions for you. And um, other than that, we wish you well. We wish you the best of luck, um, and we'll see you soon.